be full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For our God, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. And may the source of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> News updates from Ebon Abbey, 103.5 FM, immediately after Angelus, 6 o'clock a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. weekdays. Stay tuned to be updated, to be informed. News updates, live reports. Ebon Abbey FM breaks the news with actualities. I believe that, that if we are hoping for a new Nigeria, you can as well listen online via mixlr.com slash Good morning and welcome to Abona the 103.5 FM news update today, Friday, the 31st day of March 2023. And the time is four minutes past the hour of six. Martin Ifan Shuku Ekezi is my name. The headlines. Soludo laments poor state of IGR as he inaugurates Anambra Board of Internal Revenue. Abia pensioners celebrate Oti's election in citywide dance party. You have done well for workers. We will miss you. Enugu labor leaders tell Governor Uguayu. Abia Guba, I am shocked. I have not met her before. Ibazo reacts to wreck Oti. Ohanez Ndibu urges Ghani Adams to prevent APC talks from inciting conflict in Lagos. U.S. arms left behind in Afghanistan fall into TTP hands. Now, details. Soludo laments poor state of IGR as he inaugurates Anambra Board of Internal Revenue. Anambra State Governor Chuku Masoludo has inaugurated the State Board of Internal Revenue. The board, which is taxed with increasing the state's inter internal generated revenue, has Mr. Richard Madiebo as its chairman. The governor performed the function at Government Lodge Amorbia on Wednesday. Executive directors of the board include Dr. Greg Ugochuku Ezilo, Anambra South, Dr. Christian Madubuku, Anambra North, Mr. Benjamin Anierobi, Ukafo. Anambra Central. Other members include the Commissioner for Budget and Economic Planning, Mrs. Chiamaka Nake, Commissioner for Finance, Mr. Ifatu Onejeme, Commissioner for Lands, Professor Ofonze Amushazi, Commissioner for Transport, Mrs. Pat Igwebike. Others are Mr. Don Aduzo, Secretary, Head of Lego Department, Mr. Chika Ofoma, Head of assessment and Mrs. Juliet Wapudolu, 
head of high net individual assessment de de development department speaking after creation Soludo pointed out that the internal revenue service is the lifeblood of all government operations, emphasizing that if it doesn't work, nothing works. The governor noted that the results of IGR are not even close to 50% of what he anticipated to achieve. He stressed that he expected to have the revenue body double its initial revenue within its first four months, which did not happen. He maintained that the state government should be making more than three billion naira per month which has yet to happen and that the 2023 budget is expected to generate four billion naira per month stressing that the anambra state government is running a deficit on igr which is one of the key projections faac allocations are unpredictable but we have an economy with an estimated value of up to five trillion naira it is critical to highlight the enormous potentials that exist as well as the appropriate benchmark and targets. If we have a 5 trillion Naira estimate and collect 1%, that is 60 billion Naira per year. If we collect 2%, that is 120 billion Naira per year, or a minimum of 10 billion Naira per month on average. If we receive 5% of income, we will have 300 billion Naira per year. As of Monday, we are dangling around 1 billion Naira per month, which is extremely low. You can see how far we are doing in relation to the potentials that exist, Soludo said. <music> Abia pensioners celebrate OT's election in citywide dance party. The senior citizens, including the strong and fair looking men and women, displayed placards expressing their happiness over Mr. OT's victory. Hundreds of Abia retirees on Thursday danced through the major streets of Umaria, clad in all white, in celebration of the election of Dr. Alex Oti of the Labour Party, LP, as governor. The Jubilean senior citizens, including the strong and frail looking men and women, displayed placards expressing their happiness over the outcome of the governorship poll in the state. They took off from the sub treasury on Bende Road and ended their march at Alex Oti campaign office on the Bank Road singing and dancing. The pensioners operating under the edges of concerned Abia pensioners because became the signature of residents who had always identified them with black attire. The pensioners had always dressed in all black, especially to protect their 45 months unpaid pension areas and gratuities. In a speech, the coordinator of the group, Emeka Okeze, said they were rejoicing over the election of the Labour Party candidate, hence they are all white attire. We have not dressed like this for many years. Rather, we dress in all black as mourners because the outgoing government could not pay our pensions and gratuities. Today, we decided to wear white and dance around the town to celebrate with our governor-elect and show our joy and solidarity, Mr. Okeze said. The group also expressed confidence that Mr. Oti would address their plight. Mr. Oti, represented by the secretary of his campaign council, OK Kano, also thanked them for trusting and believing in him, which they showed by their massive turnout to vote for him and all the Labour Party candidates. He reaffirmed his promise to liquidate the areas of salaries and pensions owned to them within the first six months of his assumption of office. <laughs> You have done well for workers who will miss you in Labour leaders, tell Governor Uguain. The leadership of the organized labor in Enugu State, comprising the Nigerian Labor Congress NLC and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, has paid glowing tributes to Governor Ifan Uguain for his exemptional commitment to the welfare of the state workforce, notwithstanding the avalanche of challenges experienced by his administration since it assumed office in 2015. The labor leaders in what could be described as a validatory visit to Governor Uguain at the government house in Ugu on Thursday said that the governor has done so well for the workers, even though we may not say that you have solved all the issues facing workers. The organized labor stressed that Governor Uguain met the most difficult economic recession twice in the history of Enugu State and in Nigeria, and yet he was able to address the basic needs of the workers to a satisfactory level and enjoy the harmonious working relationship 
with the state workforce, unlike in the past, pointing out that Enugu is dominantly a civil service state with inherent huge wage bills and other related financial obligations to be attended to mostly from the state's lean resources. The workers appreciated the governor's remarkable efforts in addressing their needs and also attend to development issues in the state. Speaking on behalf of the workers of the state and leaders of the organized level, the state chairman of the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, Comrade Bennett Asogwa, disclosed that their relationship with Governor Guani was very clear and unprecedented in the history of the state, saying, Your Excellency, we know that we are really going to miss you seriously. We are praying for the incoming governor, Dr. Peter Ndubisimba, to be better, but so far, so excellent, he commended there. We thank you so much that we, we know that God has not finished with you. This is the beginning of your leadership. We are expecting you in higher places in Jesus' name, the level leader said. Appreciating the workers for their kind words, solidarity, and support. All this while, Governor Guan charged them to remain focused and committed to the peace and progress of the state. He urged them to extend the same support and cooperation to the incoming administration of Dr. Mba. <laughs> Abia Guba, I am shocked. I have not met her before. Ibazo reacts to Rek Oti. Abia State Governor Dr. Okeze Ibazo has expressed shock over the allegation of conniving with some officers of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in the state March 18th governorship election. Ibazo spoke during an interview on a television program on Thursday. Record that the returning officer of the Abia governorship election, Professor Nenna Oti claimed that she was offered financial incentives to manipulate the election results. Oti, the vice chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, made the revelation on Tuesday while being welcomed by the management, staff, and students of the university. Similarly, the governor elect Alex Oti accused some electoral officers of working in connivance with Ibazo to alter some results of governorship election in the state. According to Oti, results from Obiungwa local government area where, where Governor Ibazu hails from are being altered in favor of the ruling People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its candidate, Okechuku Ahiwe. But Ibazu said he has never met Prof. Oti before, adding, I am shocked because he, in the first place, he said, if she is a professor, she should know that she doesn't even have the capacity to manipulate the results because the results more must have emanated from the units collected at the wards and local government. For her, it is just to add them up and announce. I have not met her before. I have not spoken to her. If we have met her, let her come to the public and announce. I am sure she's only making a big noise out of nothing. The only thing was that I saw the coincidence and traced her background and complained to INEC that this lady is not going to be fair, but they assured me not to worry. So I'm still shocked, he stated. <music> Ohane Zendibu urges Ghani Adams to prevent APC talks from inciting conflict in Lagos. Ohane Zendibu has called on Are on Kakanfo of Yoruba land, Eva Ghani Adams, to intervene and prevent the All Progressive Congress APC talks led by Musliu Akinsaya, known as MC Uluomo from instigating a conflict between the Yoruba and Igbo communities in Lagos State. The Secretary General of the organization, Okechuku Isiguzoro, condemned the unprovoked attacks on Igbos in Lagos, stating that the attacks appear to have motives beyond political gain. Several markets in Lagos, primarily inhabited by Igbo traders, have been destroyed by mysterious fires in recent weeks. Isiguzoro expressed disappointment that Lagos State Governor Babajide Shamwolu has not been able to resolve the attacks on Igbos. He called on Iba Ghani Adams to use his position to according to the report released by Radio Free Europe. This influx of weapons has caused a surge in violence in Pakistan over the past two years, it added. When the United States pulled out its forces from Afghanistan in 2021, it left behind around $7 billion dollar worth of military equipment and weapons, including firearms, communication gears, and even armored vehicles. The Afghan Taliban seized the arms during this chaotic U.S. withdrawal 
The radio reported that since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, some of the American military gear and weapons had turned up in Pakistan, where they were used by armed groups fighting Pakistan government. Abdul Sayed, a Sweden-based researcher who tracks the TTP, said the outlawed groups' access to sophisticated combat weapons have had a terrifying impact, especially on the lesser-equipped police force in Pakistan. This is where we draw the curtains on news updates on Ebona at the 103.5 FM. But before we leave, a quick look at the headlines. Soludo laments poor state of IGR as he inaugurates Anambra Board of Internal Revenue. Abia pensioners celebrate OT's election in citywide dance party. You have done well for workers. We will miss you, Enugu labor leaders tell Governor Uguay, Abia Guba. I am shocked. I have not met her before. Ibazo reacts to Rek Oti. Ohaneza Ndibu urges Ghani Adams to prevent APC talks from inciting conflict in Lagos. U.S. arms left behind in Afghanistan fall into TTP hands. <laughs> You just listen to news updates on Ebona at the 103.5 FM. News produced and read by Martin Defiant Shuku AKZ. Thank you for listening. Once again, good morning.